You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode number 50. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. S-O-V-T-D-A-Y, night, S-O-V-T-D-A-Y, night. Bonus points if you know what that song is, and uh, extra bonus points if you know the movie where the song was used, where it was followed with this line, heed, pants, no. Yeah. If you know that one, you know what I'm talking about. Piper Dune. Yeah. It's Mike Myers, and so I married an axe murderer, and... I love that movie for a couple of reasons. Um, Mike Myers is really funny in it, but the Scottish character of the dad is, and I kid you not, it's literally, or literally, as they say in the UK, my dad. Uh, I grew up with a crazy Scottish dad, so uh, that that, uh, movie holds a warm place in my heart. But S-O-V-T, semi-occluded, Vocal tract exercises, semi-occluded, partially blocked vocal tract. Why would we want a partially blocked vocal tract? Um, Usually having partially blocked tracts in our body is not something that we want, but with the voice, it can actually be a good thing. Listen, singing is hard. We all know that singing is hard. Uh, Singing being hard keeps voice teachers uh, in business and gives them job security. It's one of the trickier instruments to learn to play because the balance is so uh, particular and peculiar. And when you go uh, these from your lower range to your upper range, these shifts of resonance are basically destabilizing. And the sensations that you think you should have when you listen to other singers and you hear their power, you think it feels like this brute power and it's not. They are basically getting a balance of the right amount of muscle and the vocal folds coming together with the correct resonance to really uh, make that sound wave so strong and powerful. But they're not working that hard. When you see great singers and they're belting away, it doesn't seem that effortful for them. And that's where people get frustrated because they try and make it feel big and then it doesn't sound good and it doesn't sound big. So what these SOVT exercises do is they're a bit of a shortcut. They can put us in a state as we use them of kind of feeling what great singing feels like, uh, what it feels like to have your vocal folds actually come together in the right configuration so that they're not overpressed and squeezing or just barely coming together and breathy. And it allows us to kind of increase the amount of muscle we're using without it tending to jam up and without risking the cord slamming together. They're also wonderful for vocal rehab if your voice is really tired, um, if you've been using it a lot, or maybe you're coming off of a cold, or ooh, if you've you've come off uh, vocal surgery, which I hope you haven't, but uh, and, and you should be working with a professional if you have. But these SOVT exercises can be so very very, very helpful uh, in in getting you into the right place. Even your speaking voice, feeling where your speaking voice should be, uh, is really helped by SOVT exercises. Now, some of the main exercises that I use that that everybody will know, and uh, not everybody, but you may be familiar with, um, are lip bubbles and tongue trills. And what you're doing with a lip bubble, you may have seen this where you just get your your mouth nice and floppy and you'll just kind of get an uh sound under it. And you think, okay, that's, that's well and good. Uh, I used to do them just mindlessly because my voice teacher told me to and I didn't realize why I was doing it. But what's actually happening is in good singing, the sound wave is is vibrating air and the the vibrating air then travels from your vocal folds where it's created uh, through your throat and then through your mouth and out to the world. Now, your vocal cords have this job of holding back the air and compressing it in order to create the sound wave. 
that's a little tricky for them, especially on high notes. It's a lot of muscle going on, a lot of balance. So nature has provided this amazing thing where when, we, when we're singing right and our vocal track aligns with the sound wave in a, in a, a balanced and tuned way, when we get that adjustment just right, uh, you'll hear it in good singers. Their voices are just kind of booming and ringing. And what happens is the sound wave gets these boosts of energy from the vocal track, from the resonances in the vocal track. It's like little um, amplifiers being turned on. And this vocal energy not only radiates out the mouth, but it also radiates back the other way and presses down on the vocal folds and helps them resist the air. Uh, the other thing it does is... Uh, when we're singing in the, the right condition, uh, e the air pressure is such that it creates a resistance. It gives a little pushback before it, the air then moves again. There's a, there's a resistance, um, an inertance. It's lazy, if you will. And that, that laziness actually presses down on the vocal folds and helps them hold back the air. Almost every time that I get a singer into the right spot, and they feel this um, condition of the tuned vowel sending the energy back down to the folds, they'll say, wow, that feels so easy. And it's, it's an amazing place to be. It's where great singing is done, but it's tricky to find. So uh, voice teachers and voice researchers have developed some shortcuts. And one of the great shortcuts is SOVT, semi-occluded vocal track exercises. So the lip bubble, it's uh, number one is keeping your face relaxed, right? Because if you have too much tension, the, the lips aren't going to bubble. You want them to bubble slowly. But the resistance of the lips is uh, enough that it kind of recreates that feeling of uh, good singing, pressing energy down on the vocal folds. So you don't have to work as hard and the folds will hold together. Um, it also does some things with readjusting uh, the resonance values so that the transition is a little more stable. Um, it's not as hard to go through. Very often, if you if you try and sing, uh, and you're feeling that crack, if you... Suddenly, it's much easier. That crack will start to go away. Now, of course, there aren't many songs with as the lyrics, um, although I should write one because it'll be very easy to sing. It'll be popular karaoke bars. But uh, what you can do is in the moment that you're doing that, just kind of feel what the muscles are doing, how relaxed yet um, resistant they are, that they're holding back air, but they're not over squeezing, how that transition feels nice and smooth, where you feel the sensations going. People will very often say, wow, I feel the, the lower notes kind of off the roof of my mouth, but as I sing higher, the vibrations seem to go back uh, behind uh, uh, my eyes and it, it lifts up and that's a very real sensation for singers and you need to have an awareness of that and an anticipation. I, I won't dictate the sensations you should feel but that's a very very common one and these semi-occluded exercises can heighten those sensations. So lip bubble is a big one. Uh, if you can do it the tongue trill is a good one. Not everybody can trill their tongue and, and the, the tongue can get tired after a few minutes, but that's a really good one. And I think of saying like an uh under it, because we don't want, we don't want like that high larynx. So as, you, as you're doing these, think of, think of a uh or uh sound under it. Other ones I like, uh, I like the TH. You can even kind of purse your lips. No. As if you're saying no, no, or no. Uh, some of the Dr. Joseph Stemple exercises will utilize this. And you, you just get your protruding lips nice and buzzy. Ooh. But my current favorite, and you may have heard about this, is using the straw. And there's uh, what the straw does is not only does it give you uh, the resistance because all of a sudden when you start phonating through a straw, uh, you've essentially elongated your resonating tube. Your resonating tube is from your, your, your vocal cords, 
which just sit at the, the top of your your lungs, yeah, or your trachea. And then from there, the sound emits, it goes through your throat, out your mouth, and it's about six inches or so. But when you phonate through the straw, you've now just increased the length of the resonating tube because the sound now has to travel through the straw as well in order to go out into the world. But you've also condensed the space. And when you get that space really narrow, you get a feedback of pressure from both the air as well as the, the, the sound waves or the, the back pressure of the air that you're pushing and the vibrating air, the sound waves, all push back down on the vocal cords. And they do this amazing thing of the, it's like a little chiropractor. The, it'll pop them into uh, the right position against each other. You know, you need your vocal folds kind of squaring up, as if you will. The edges need to come together. And you don't want too much depth of cord on the high notes because you'll end up, ah, uh, you'll end up squeezing. But you also don't want, ah, uh, where just the tiny little margins come together. So the straw is going to help your muscles find that medium, that middle ground that you can, that you need for the stronger notes. Now, when you're first doing this, uh, a lot of people will recommend more of a drink straw. Uh, you're not going to get as much back pressure from it, but the danger is if you push too much air and push too hard, it can be a little strenuous. Um, ultimately, the better one are the, the stir straws. Uh, the very, um, like the coffee straws, those are great. And uh, a few of the exercises, I'm going to do a podcast that really go into the exercises, but uh, all you need to do is uh, play it basically like a kazoo. So you're just phonating uh, through the straw and you can just do things. I've, I've actually got a straw here with me. You can do uh, a siren. And I'll tell you, just doing that, my voice instantly feels lighter. Again, it, it pops the voice into the right place. And if I'm working on a song and I've, I've got a high note and I, I know that I'm beginning to over muscle it, I'll go ahead and hit the high note through the straw and, and I, can, I can lean into it. However, because of the back pressure of the air coming back, it creates a cushion on the fold. So my cords aren't able to slam together as hard as they otherwise would because it's like this, this big air compressor is blowing back down on them. So it's cushioning them as they come together. And it stops my nervous system from overloading and over muscling. Uh, the note so I can get a feel from it from the with the straw and then go back and then sing the note again if you are getting vocally fatigued uh, these SOVT exercises especially straw exercises are fantastic because they can um, in a sense think of it as uh, again like a chiropractor along with a, a masseuse that back pressure is pressing down on the cords aligning them correctly getting the, the the muscle to back off but also making sure they come together you're getting more of a balance and it's it's almost like it's it's smoothing out the puffiness I will do this for students, uh, and the first time they do it, I'll have them say something, usually um, a phrase that, that kind of has an up emotional feel, like, yes, that's right, so that they're, you know, they're not here vocally. But they'll, they'll go ahead and do that, and then as soon as they talk, they're like, what just happened? Um, it's, it's almost like voodoo. They're, they're usually surprised. And what you want to do, especially if you're vocally fatigued, if you kind of feel your voice wanting to do this... Just do 30 seconds, a minute on the straw and then go and say something kind of positive. Yes, that's right. And feel where your voice is. That's where you want your voice to be. Uh, and this go, doing the SOVT exercises is a great way to remind your nervous system what that balanced um, uh, resonance feels like and what uh, the right pitch feels like. All of these things uh, are helped by SOVT exercises. Now, what I'm, uh, you can't see this uh, unless you're looking at my Facebook Live, but I've, I've got this cool little straw that's called an uh, Uvo straw, O-O-V-O straw. And I'll put uh, a link to it in the show notes. And um, 
the, the people who manufactured this, they were kind enough to send me one. And uh, after I played with it for a day, I went ahead and paid for another. Uh, it is this little straw that you wear around your neck, but it is made out of surgical grade silver and it's antibacterial. So as you're going ahead and putting your lips all over this thing and blowing through it, uh, when it's resting on your neck, it's actually self-cleaning and uh, no bacteria will live on its surface, which is fantastic because it's part of the problem of the straw exercise is having a straw. I'll throw them in my pockets. They get bent. Um, they'll drop on the ground. I can't find one or they're just uh, actually kind of nasty. Uh, they're made out of uh, plastic, so they're not good for the environment. And um, actually, in many areas, bans are coming on these plastic straws, so we won't even have them. Um, and the other problem is I could get a harder plastic straw that I can reuse, but it's going to get nasty and it's going to get dirty. And this thing actually looks like a cool piece of jewelry. Uh, I really, really like it. It's very cool looking. It's super handy. I wear it around my neck, so I always have a clean straw anytime I need it. Um, if you want more information on it, I have uh, no financial connection with the company. I just think that this is a great, great invention. I also think I should have come up with it, which is uh, completely annoying, but uh, I didn't. And they did, so I will uh, give you the link uh, over at uh, the website. Just go to johnhaney.com forward slash 550, johnhaney.com forward slash 50, um, and you can see the, the show notes. I also will have transcripts. I'm getting transcripts of all my shows, so you can go ahead and uh, read if you don't like listening to my voice. So yes, give these SOVT exercises a try. The other great thing is they're pretty discreet, especially the straw. Um, you, can, you can be getting in a vocal practice without making a lot of sound. Now, ultimately, yes, you can't sing with a straw, but it can set you up for success. Hey, I want to thank you so much for listening. Again, my website is johnhenny.com. If you uh, want to read some of my blog posts, uh, listen to earlier episodes, I also have some uh, product for uh, voice teachers and singers. Uh, oh, I do want to say it's coming up very soon. Uh, uh, by the time you're hearing this, it may actually be out, but my Contemporary Voice Teacher Academy is about to launch. And this is actually an entire course that I've created uh, to learn to be a voice teacher. And it will walk you through uh, step by step, show you how to deal with students. There's student observations. There's breakdowns of how the exercises work and how to listen to the voice and analyze the voice. And uh, there's quizzes all through it and then a nice big certification test at the end that you can take. So just go to my website, johnhaney.com, and click on products, and there will be information for you there. Hey, thank you again. And until next time, to better singing. Bye-bye.